Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch live stream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. In the previous video, we put together this nuclear thermal propulsion Mars transfer vehicle based on a NASA proposal, and so all the numbers are based on that NASA document, and... Well, we don't have any crew on it, so we need to send them up. Aronim and Kurovka wanted to go to Mars, and we've given them this very roomy vessel to go to Mars on. But there are problems with it, uh, especially the liquid hydrogen boil-off. I do a maneuver with it, and so we need to top up its fuel, and we're sending that fuel with the crew. And so there's the fuel tank, and here is the crew module, the Lynx spacecraft. And I'm just carefully trying to put that all together. And we launch it on a Saturn V with just the first and second stage, no third stage. The liquid hydrogen tank is taking the place of the third stage in this case. And here we go. This is in the category of because we can. Uh, this entire Mars sequence has been done with uh, upgraded Saturn Vs, F1As and J2Ss. So there it is lifting off from Cape Canaveral. And... We have first stage separation here, and second stage ignition, and that's all good. Launch escape system separation, and finally making orbits with lots and lots of capacity because the crew module and the liquid hydrogen tank aren't very heavy actually. We didn't really need the Saturn V for this. This is overkill, but anyway. Uh, so I continue to make some maneuvers with the ship in order to help with the rendezvous because we are bringing more fuel to it. And so here the fuel is on arrival. And approaching our big ship. This is a nice view. Honestly, the main reason for making the NTP Mars transfer vehicle is because it looks nice. <laughs> It, uh, it's a very sort of scenic ship, if you will. And there we are docking. Without the fairing around the bottom of the Lynx, it looks a little bit weird. And we are docked. And we do the fuel transfer. And we also transfer some of the RCS propellant. We just leave enough for the fuel canister to deorbit itself. Don't really think we needed that separate docking port there, but anyway. Off it goes, so that's it deorbiting. And next up, we had some other tourists that were currently in orbit around the moon that wanted to go to Mars, and so we have to pick them up, and I decided to use the pair for that. And so here we are launching the pair on um, our modified Proton-ish it's not really protonish. Well, what would you even call it? Uh, it's got three RD 180s at the bottom. Anyway, the pair was originally supposed to launch in a proton, but this has higher performance. And we also have a bridge stage on top to help give the pair a little bit of a boost. So that's the first stage with the three RD 180s going off. And I believe this is basically a uh, proton second stage, though not exactly. It's burning UDMH and NTO and it's got four engines and it's got about the right thrust for it, so yeah, I believe that is basically the second stage of proton somewhat redesigned. And so the Briz boosts the pair as much as it can. Not very much, really. Uh, about a thousand meters per second and then the pair does the rest to get to the moon. But we have our Mars transfer vehicle waiting in orbit, so we do have to deal with that. So while the pair is on the way to the moon, we need to do things with our Mars transfer vehicle to get it on its way. So there the pair has its encounter, but we'll pay attention to it later. We have it plotted to rendezvous with the lunar gateway there. And here it is heading out from Earth serenely and with its really interesting shape, but very, very spacey shape. This is, this is a good spacey shape. All right, so here we have a problem. 
So the liquid hydrogen has clearly boiled off. You can see the level there is way lower. Uh, so that is a serious issue. But first I needed to send up another mission for our Mars window. This is a supply mission. We just have to get some supplies on the way to Mars before we send any more people, right? Uh, we're gonna be sending new crew over to Mars, but there are already people around Mars and they need supplies and these new arrivals will need supplies. So let's get that on the way first while I think about what to do about that boil off because it's not immediately obvious what I should do and we do need it to have some fuel to capture around Mars, right? There needs to be liquid hydrogen left over by the time it reaches Mars Otherwise, it's going to be in trouble. So we actually had boosters on this because we wanted to get as many supplies as we could over to Mars. So those were, I think, UA-1563 SRBs, which were potentially intended for a Saturn V. And that's the second stage getting us to orbit. The third stage, this is a modified S-4B. The J2S has more thrust than the regular J2, and but it should still have the same burn time, same potential burn time, so I created a new tank to make use of the rest of the burn time, otherwise the original tank would not have the full burn time. So that's why I made the special tank, and so it got its transfer to Mars, and here we are plotting a correction, because uh, during this window, we needed a mid-course correction, pretty substantial one to correct inclination. So I check out the liquid hydrogen tanks and see which one had the least boil off and move the fuel into those tanks that had the least boil off and decided that we should attach some radiators to the vessel, hoping that the radiators would limit the boil off. And I used the Shuttle Mark II for this. You can see it with folding, folded wings and atop the New Glen. Though, given the progress on the New Glen, I might today reconsider using it. Uh, I would like a rocket that will be in service a little bit more promptly. But anyway, there it goes. Of course, uh, given the sheer size of the Shuttle Mark II, there aren't a whole lot of vehicles that would fit on top of. And that's the end of the first stage, reserving some fuel for a barge landing and ignition of the second stage. The Shell Mark II is sized specifically so that it can fit enough tankage in the bay to transfer to the moon, but of course in this case we're just doing a low earth orbit servicing mission. And there is the second stage uh, with plenty of margin getting us into orbit here. Checking everything out. We use the Shell Mark II's ED1 methane oxygen engines to get it into a phasing orbit with the target, but that's gonna take some time. So the pair actually arrives at the moon and we have to do its maneuver to capture into orbit so that it can meet up with the lunar gateway. That's a very loose uh, burn. It's not a very big burn because the lunar gateway is in a very high orbit. So this doesn't have to come down to low lunar orbit at all. Unfortunately, it has had boil off. I forgot to put MLI layers. Normally the pair is pretty good about boil off, but only if you put the MLI layers on. I don't even understand how boil off works in the game half the time. Uh, anyway, uh, the Shell Mark II has an extendable docking port. That's just for uh, securing it to the target. Otherwise, the crew is not expected to transfer through, of course, with that piston there. Uh, the crew is expected to pull those radiators off and attach them to the Mars transfer vehicle. However, it ended up being that we needed two Kerbals to do that, even though we could, because I expanded the inventory volume for each Kerbal, uh, even though we can put the panels inside the inventory for the Kerbal, we can't take them or place them without two Kerbals being present. That was annoying. I didn't know where to change that number. So we had to do a whole dance with these Kerbals, making sure that they were both present at the pickup and attachment locations before we actually made the attachment. And this provides some scenic views, but it was extraordinarily tedious, <laughs> especially since we were putting six of these radiators on a fairly large ship, so yeah. 
Yep, scenic. This is very scenic, but extremely annoying. But we got done. Uh, the most annoying part was that the radiators didn't get lined up properly. There was no real reference. I should have like put lines on those tanks. I didn't really anticipate this situation. So there was no clear way to make sure everything was perfectly symmetrical and lined up. You can see they're staggered in weird ways, but I had had enough after trying to do this. We try and, again, get the hydrogen into the least boil-off tanks. There is a boil-off number that's indicated in that right-click menu. And then I transfer the two Kerbals that came up with the shuttle into the Lynx and then get the Shuttle Mark II off because I didn't want to risk them on the Shuttle Mark II. Uh, there are more problems than I thought there would be. One, This problem here is that the docking port doesn't want to retract. That was weird. The docking ports and the Infernal Robotics Pistons don't always like each other. So I think there was some sort of issue like that. And here we are trying to dump stuff that we didn't need because we seem to be imbalanced. That doesn't really help. Yeah, ultimately this thing is in a serious situation. At least it manages to hold its pitch for the most critical part, but eventually it loses it. Yeah, yeah, there it goes. So it was a good thing that we didn't keep the Kerbals in. This was a test run. And part of the problem is the way we have the wings retracted on launch and then extend them. I don't think that the game fully appreciates the wingage in this position. So that is part of the problem. It doesn't have a whole lot of wing surface to begin with. So yeah. But anyway, we get control over it. But the situation is not great. And its stall speed is way too high. And it does that. We just don't have a whole lot of control with it the way it is right now. So, okay. Well, of course, a lot of hydrogen has boiled off on the Mars transfer vehicle. So we need a really big tank of hydrogen. And so I used the S2 stage of the Saturn V. So we've got on the top the S2 stage with another tank of hydrogen and methane and oxygen on top of the main S2 stage and the rest of the Saturn V plus boosters. So this is a heavy duty sort of deal. It's getting a bit hot up there as the boosters separate. We did shut off the center engine on the S1C stage and there goes the first stage and the second stage is lit. But yeah, uh, for your nuclear engine purposes, if you don't want a custom tank, the, the S2 stage is not bad. The S2 stage is not bad, even if you just use the liquid hydrogen volume. So, the reason we're carrying methane and oxygen is because uh, I wanted to use orbital engines uh, as such for this. I forget which engines I used, actually. But here we are doing the rendezvous. They just have a little bit more thrust than the nuclear engine. And they'll help us on the transfer as well. Uh, given the situation, the boil-off on the S2 tank is actually less than the boil-off on the Mars transfer vehicle. I don't understand. Uh, so we're actually going to keep it connected to the Mars transfer vehicle and have it do the transfer burn. Because it can provide more thrust than the nuclear engines on the Mars transfer vehicle itself. You can see it's got a much larger nuclear engine. And it's also got the methane oxygen engines. These are not ED ones. I forget which engines I put on here. Possibly part of my sure strut engine pack. Okay, well, there was an initial burn, but we had to do the burn in two parts. The reason why I wanted more thrust is because the burn time was so long. And so we still have to do it in two parts. And so this is the final burn for Mars. You can see both the nuclear engine and the methane oxygen engines running. By the way, I forgot to mention we did move off the Lynx capsule with the other two Kerbals in order to dock this S2 stage. So they're off and they'll deorbit separately. But now this is on its way to Mars. It'll have to do a mid-course adjustment. It's gonna keep the S2 stage connected to it. 
so that we can use it to limit boil off. This is very awkward, but at least they're on their way. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.